Welcome back to another clean with me video. I usually put these videos out on a weekly basis. So if you're interested, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And we're kicking this week's clean off by making the syrup for a sugar cookie latte from Starbucks. I tried one of these a couple days ago and I really, really liked it. So I wanted to try to recreate the syrup at home. Usually I just use like flavored milks, but kind of wanted to go a little bit all out with the coffee making today. So the recipe is pretty simple. It's equal parts brown sugar and white sugar. I use coconut sugar, but I'm sure brown sugar, I'm sure it tastes very similar to brown sugar. And then mixed with equal parts water. And then you add vanilla extract and also almond extract. Apparently the almond extract is the secret ingredient that makes it really taste like that sugar cookie flavor. So I mixed all of that up, um, just simmering on the stove. And then I poured it into my little glass jar. It definitely smelled really good. So the Starbucks recipe uses almond milk, but I'm gonna mix a little bit of this half and half dairy-free creamer because the almond milk I have is not like a barista one. I don't know if they use a barista one. I just have the almond breeze, but just to kind of thicken it up a little bit. So just combining those two milks and then I will heat it up in the microwave for about a minute. And then I'm gonna add in our freshly made flavored syrup. And after that's been heated and it's foamed, I'm gonna make a shot of espresso. We have new espresso tools here. We have a funnel and a WDT tool to kind of pick out all of the clumps from the coffee beans. So I've really been, I've been liking it so far. It definitely adds an extra step to the coffee making process, but it's kind of fun to like slow down and enjoy the process. So just pulling a double shot of espresso for that. And then I mix it up and after trying, it was pretty good. It definitely wasn't exactly like how they would make it in a coffee shop, but it was pretty yummy and definitely a nice little sweet addition to my coffee. So the first chore I'm kicking off with is draining the bottom of the washer machine. If you didn't know you were supposed to do this, um, maybe it's only for certain washer machines though. So I have like a front loading washer, so maybe it's only for specific types. But for this one, you generally should do it like once a month. Sometimes I'll go two months without doing it, but then the water pours out really fast. But basically you just take a container um, that can catch a lot of water underneath. You pull off the cap of that little pipeline there and then all the water just drains into it and I just dump it in the toilet. And then make sure to screw it on really tight after that or else you'll have some water leaking from that pipe. There's also like a little funnel there that you're also supposed to clean, but every time I check that, it's not too dirty. So I check it every couple of months as opposed to once a month. So once I've done that, I'm just going to load in a load of clothes that need to be washed. So after all that, I am going to wash the coffee tools. I usually try to wash these like once a week. So like I said, we have those two new tools, the funnel and the WDT tool. We also have the weighted tamp and then just a little pad for it. So I'm just giving those all a wash with the Dawn Power Wash. They definitely like gather grinds and debris from coffee beans throughout the week. So it's good to give them a wash, at least on a regular basis. And then also with that, the tool that catches the water underneath the coffee machine, again, I try to get this once a week. It's hard to get all of the coffee bits from this, so I gave it a spray with the Dawn Power Wash and tried to give it a couple minutes before rinsing it off. Um, it doesn't do a perfect job, but it's not like we're actually drinking from this drip tray. It just kind of sits at the bottom and I just want to give it like a freshen, a freshen up. So 
at this point, I'm not sure if this laundry had already been there or if this, okay. Yeah, this, this laundry had already been drying from a couple days ago. So I just took a few moments to put all of that away. And I feel like having the drying rack like definitely makes things dry faster. I used to just hang them on hangers on my door and I feel like it would take like, sometimes it would take up to like three or four days for something to dry completely if it was like a heavier item. But on the drying rack, now I feel like things can dry like within 24 to 36 hours basically. So definitely like much more efficient way to dry. And now that it's been cleared, I'm just adding the clothes from the current load that I'm working on that need to be air dried. And the rest of that laundry is just going in the washer. So this is something that I did um, a couple of videos ago. I organized my entryway, but very quickly, it's just looking like trash again. It's just so cluttered and so messy and very frustrating to walk through and put all of like the winter coats up. So I'm going to be tackling that in today's video. The first spot I thought I would start is this bin of papers this is where like all of the mail goes and i did that off camera just because it was just a lot of documents and random stuff that's the first thing i did and after that it's looking much much better so that was like a good starting point for this entryway to actually just like kickstart the process and the best way to actually go about cleaning this space is to take everything out of it first so I'm just removing some of those bottles of wines that I just bought on this day, some stuff from a Target trip, and then everything that's here normally. All of like the bags and like the bins. Definitely a ton of reusable bags in this area. Everything under the third shelf on the right, we keep like summer stuff like sunscreen and bug spray. So I may try to find a better place for that sunscreen since it's winter now, not really using it. Same with the bug spray. Removing a big box of recycling, some backpacks there, and then of course a lot of the shoes live here. So just kind of putting those all into that basket. That basket's just slightly too small for shoes, but it's what we have for now. And then this little side table is kind of like the drop zone, I guess, if you will, where like the masks and hand sanitizer really lives and also have some tennis balls and a single tennis racket. So what I'm going to do before going through all the stuff is just really wipe it down and clean out the area. So I'm using my favorite, the Method Pink Grapefruit All-Purpose Spray to wipe down this black fixture here, black furniture, like bench, to wipe down this black bench in the entryway. And then same on the little side table as well. To go a little further than I normally would, I'm also vacuuming the baseboards and then I'm also wiping them down with the same method spray. They get definitely pretty dusty um, when you leave them alone for a while. So this was pretty refreshing to do. And then I took my Dyson V7 and vacuumed up the entire entryway area. And then to top it all off, I took a method floor cleaner. I'll put the exact one on the screen and then just distributed that throughout the floor with a Swiffer and a microfiber cloth. Mm -hmm. 
this was definitely due for a good floor wiping. I couldn't tell you the last time that was done. Here is everything that I collected from the entryway and just kind of shifted it all out to the kitchen. So we have a ton of reusable bags, as you can see here. I'm gonna kind of go through them and pick out some um, because we definitely don't use all of them on an everyday basis. Mainly the ones that I use are like the grocery store ones. So I'm just going through those first um, and just finding the ones that maybe we don't really need to hang on to and they're just kind of taking up space at this point. I genuinely have no idea where this blue digital marketing conference bag came from. I didn't go to that conference. My boyfriend didn't go to that conference. I have no idea where it came from, but it's a good bag to hold the other bags. So we're gonna, we're gonna hang on to it. This white basket stays under the entryway table and in it we have some paper plates and forks and I was really debating if I should get rid of these because we only use them when we host like a larger amount of people but that doesn't happen super frequently and when we do host a couple people we'll just use like the plates that we have but ultimately I just ended up deciding to keep them because it's not a lot of stuff it doesn't take up too much room and I just don't want to have to buy more if we decide that we need them so I'm just gonna hang on to them for now and then this is a basket where I would kind of keep like my sunglasses and just like some stuff that's kind of used on a daily basis I think I'm putting my sunglasses away in it here, but I took one, another pair out after this and just left one pair in there because I don't really use them as much in the summer. Then I just have my disposable cameras and just a couple of other things like lens cleaner in that basket. I'm also going through the coats that are hanging on the coat rack here. There's definitely like a bunch of sweaters that maybe are due for a washing at this point and I just wanted to reorganize like where all of the coats and everything were just to consolidate. Also had some reusable masks hanging on the other little coat rack there and we really just don't use them as much. So I'm just going to take them down and I ended up putting like scarves and hats on that rack instead. So now I am putting everything away. Definitely a great feeling. Again, that first shelf is just gonna be like tissues, some sunscreen, I put other bottles somewhere else. The middle shelf are some empty packages for shipping and mailing and some plastic grocery bags. And then the final shelf is reusable grocery bags. Then I'm just hanging back up the coats, took away a couple sweaters and sweatshirts that could be washed at this point. And there it is, it looks so much better, so much more room to walk in and just more functional now. It's a small space, so I'm trying to do the best that I can with what I got, but I think it came out pretty good and to this day it's still staying pretty functional I mean I'll probably be saying something different in like three to four videos but for now it's nice and clean and just going back to that laundry I'm just gonna be folding up everything that was in there now and I'm doing it on the floor because these sheets on my bed were drying at this point so it's a little more difficult and annoying to do on the floor but I just wanted to get it done as opposed to waiting for the bed sheets to be done. And 
and then just putting everything away in the drawers that they belong to. And then I had a huge pile of socks to go through. And somehow, miraculously, Kiki is not here to take them away from me. That was only earlier in the laundry folding process. This is also something that I did in a past video. I went through this bar cart, but again, it's, it's facing some disarray. It's just crowded and cluttered with things that shouldn't be on a bar cart. So I'm again, taking the time to go through everything. The first thing I'm doing is just removing everything that shouldn't be there and putting them in their proper space. So I had a bigger order of super goop because I was using up my FSA money. So I had to go put all of that in the proper spot. And then we have like Gatorade bottles and iced tea, but wouldn't really use that with traditional bar liquids. So I put those in the fridge where they should be. And then I am removing everything off of the cart. I'm also going to be getting rid of some alcohol. Just don't really don't drink or got for free at some point. So I think now's the time to say goodbye to a couple of those bottles just to make room for some more and to make it look less cluttered. It gets so dusty on the bottom that I brought up my Dyson before pulling out a rag. So this is what I'm getting rid of. The Casadorius was pretty old along with the bottles of the sparkling rosé. So it was time to say goodbye to those. I also got rid of the Bacardi Ocho, the eight year aged rum that was like four years old and just, I don't really drink dark rum. So it was time to say goodbye. We also have a Google Home on the top rack of the bar cart, but the only thing we, we really use it for is to ask it what the weather is and occasionally playing music. That's its purpose. So I'm just going in again with the Method all-purpose pink grapefruit spray and making sure to spray each shelf of the bar cart and then also taking a dry microfiber cloth and just wiping off the top of each bottle. They get pretty dusty. The process of putting everything away is definitely my favorite part. I usually like to switch it up just like the tiniest bit and I'll try to keep like everything in a similar family together. So like all of the vodka is together and then the darker liquors are in that middle row with the tequila on the end and then putting all of the wines away, trying to group it by like white wines and red wines and rosés. This middle rack is where some supplies are held. So some bottle openers, a couple of shooters, relevant to the bar cart. And that kit that I'm putting away, the bar set is from Amazon and it has like a shaker and just some other supplies, uh, like a peeler and like a stirring rod that are just all good bar staples to have. And finally onto the top rack. This is where I keep mostly like mixers. Yeah, this is where I keep mostly mixers like triple sec and the St. Germain, um, just kind of things that are like additional to drinks. And then I also ended up putting the rosé on top there. And there you have it, a much neater bar cart. Again, if you want to see my other bar cart cleanouts and declutter, I will link that video. So at this point, I'm just loading up the dishwasher from after dinner.
and after hand washing the dishes that don't go in the dishwasher, I just gave the sink a quick spray with the Dawn dish soap just to kind of clean up and disinfect the area. And then wiping off the counters with the Method Granite Cleaner. And then usually these soaps need to be refilled about once a week or once every two weeks. So I'm just refilling the Mrs. Myers soap with the Ever Spring soap refill. The Mrs. Myers stuff is pretty it's pretty pricey and it also comes in a plastic jar. I mean I know this is also plastic, but the Mrs. Myers one has like less refills and it's like a thicker plastic refill bottle. So I just prefer to use those ones on those bottles. And then as I do, I'm giving the bed a quick vacuum with the mini motorhead attachment on the Dyson. And then making the bed. This is something that I do usually every Sunday just to finish off the week and start fresh with a nice set of clean bed sheets. And the final thing I'm doing here is changing out the hand towels. Again, same concept so that you can start the week fresh with some clean towels and hand towels. Hand towels I usually change every like three to four days, but regardless, just showing it here as part of this Sunday reset moment. That has been it for today's quick cleaning video. I hope this gave you some motivation and inspiration to get some cleaning done of your own. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did like it, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you in the next video.